you can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. How can you win with Russian interference, though? That's, That's what real I'm thing. scared about no, in 2020. But, but rightly. Because right. I think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win. So how do you, you know, fight against that in 2020? You are absolutely right. He's an illegitimate president in my mind. Would you be my vice presidential candidate? For... <laughs> Folks, look, I absolutely agree. Trump didn't actually win the election in 2016. He lost the election and he was put in the office because the Russians interfered. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. The president or elect, although legally elected, is not legitimate. I don't see this president elect as a legitimate president. You said you believe that Russia's interference altered the outcome of the election. I do. We have a president who, if in fact it is proven, uh, has been assisted by the Russians and may in fact not be a legitimate president. The one thing that Trump is fearful of uh, when it comes to his being president is that finally we will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. I have an objection. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina. I object because people are horrified. He's an illegitimate president. Do you believe Trump is illegitimate president? What I believe is that there's no question that the outcome of this election was affected by the Russian interference. But there absolutely is a cloud of illegitimacy. So that legitimacy is in question, yes. So that was a very tainted election. And and in that sense, it's illegitimate. Why do you think the president is going to such great lengths to essentially prove that he beat you? Because he knows he didn't. He knows he's an illegitimate president. Stolen emails. Stolen drone. Stolen drone. Stolen election. Welcome to the world of unprecedented Trump. So do you believe President Trump is an illegitimate president? Based on what I just said, which I can't retract. <laughs> <laughs> the Russian attempt to, ha to have the election, and frankly, the FBI's uh, weighing in on the election, I think make the make, makes his election illegitimate. There was a widespread understanding that this election was not on the level. We still don't know what really happened, Isaac. I mean, there's just a lot that I think will be revealed. History will discover. But you don't win by three million votes and have all this other shenanigan stuff going on and not come away with an idea like, whoa, something's not right here. The outcome of the election was affected by their interference. And now we need to know, you know to what degree, uh, if any, the Trump campaign was actually in collusion with the uh, with, so with Russia. He knows he's an illegitimate president. So of course he's obsessed with me. and. I believe that it's a guilty conscience. We actually won the last presidential election, folks. They stole the last presidential election. And Al Gore won that election. I think he won it anyway. Actually, I think <laughs> I carried Florida. Bush versus Gore. A court took away a presidency. If all the votes were counted in Florida, that Al Gore would be president today and George Bush would be back in office. I come from Florida where you and others participated in what I call the United States coup d'etat. There's no doubt in my mind that Al Gore was elected president. I rise to object to the fraudulent 25 Florida electoral votes. I must object because of the overwhelming evidence of official misconduct, <laughs> deliberate the fraud, chair, and an attempt the to chair must remind me. It is signed by myself on behalf of my diverse constituents and the millions of Americans who have been disenfranchised by Florida's inaccurate vote count. The Supreme the, uh, Court, not the is, people of the United the, States, decided this election. Speaking to a Democratic group in Chicago Tuesday, he made it clear he thinks Al Gore was the winner. By the time it was over, our candidate had won the popular vote, and the only way they could win the election was to stop the voting in Florida. Catherine Harris, Jeb Bush, Jim Baker, and the Supreme Court hadn't tampered with the results Al Gore would be president. The yeah, Supreme yes. Court elected the president. Yes. Al Gore won the state of Florida in 2000, although not the presidency. But the Supreme Court tampered? That's a large charge. The Supreme Court stopped the counting of the votes, and if they let the count go on, Al Gore would have got the necessary votes. The Supreme Court selected George W. Bush as the president. He was not elected. There is overwhelming evidence that George W. Bush did not win this election. What I observed uh, as a voter, as a citizen of Illinois, uh, four years ago, were troubling evidence of the fact that not every vote was being counted. I don't think that George W. Bush won the election uh, in 2000 against Al Gore because I, th I think he probably lost 
Florida and also that nationwide. If you invite me back on this show in about eight weeks, I think you're going to learn that Al Gore actually did get all the votes there. The court has been thwarting formation of the popular will, the most spectacular example being Bush versus Gore, where the majority by a 5-4 vote enjoined the counting of more than 100,000 ballots in Florida and essentially gave America its first court-appointed president. I think in 2000, everybody thought, well, he did win the election, Al Gore. After the election, when you stole the election, you came back here and said, get over it. No, we're not going to get over it. You know it, I know it, they know it. We won that election. Constantly shifting vote tallies in Ohio and malfunctioning electronic machines, which may not have paper receipts, have led to additional loss of confidence by the public. The right to vote has been stolen from qualified voters. In 2004, the democratic process was thwarted. The 2004 presidential election in Ohio was riddled with unnecessary problems. Some machines malfunctioned, causing votes to be counted more than once, or not at all. Based upon an inordinate number of allegations suggesting gross voting rights violations and misconduct, I join with my colleagues in objecting to counting the state of Ohio's electoral votes. As in 2000, the votes of many who wanted to vote were not, in fact, counted. This last Friday night, I, I arranged to meet Senator Kerry at a fundraiser to give him a copy of my book. He told me he now thinks the election was stolen. The wife of John Kerry said she has lingering doubts about the legitimacy of the election. Her theory goes like this. Two brothers, she calls hard right Republicans, own 80% of voting machines in the U.S. Therefore, it would be easy to hack into the mother machines that control the electronic voting. There were numerous irregularities in Ohio, including large percentages of rejections of provisional balloting, problems with voting machines. As we look at our election system, I think it's fair to say that there are many legitimate questions about its accuracy, about its integrity. There are still legitimate concerns over the integrity of our elections. The question, obviously, is how many instances we're not caught that we don't know about. Uh, number one, we've seen a lot of what I'll call honest glitches where it just didn't work right, but also that these machines are hackable. A dishonest employee of the vendor or a dishonest employee of a local board of elections or simply someone who knows electronics uh, and has a computer at home um, could hack into these machines and, and uh, put in a secret instruction to disregard every 20th Democratic vote or add 10% to the carrier or to the Bush vote or whatever. And you might not ever know it. I agree with tens of millions of Americans who are wo very worried that when they cast the ballot on an electronic voting machine, that there is no paper trail to record that vote. The numerous irregularities that occurred with the electronic voting machines in Ohio on November the 2nd of last year point to an unresolved national crisis. We cannot declare that the election of November 2nd, 2004 was free and clear and transparent and real. There must be independent testing of the voting machines used in Ohio. I'm not confident that the election in Ohio was fairly decided. We know that there was substantial voter suppression and the machines were not reliable. The members of Congress who have brought this challenge are speaking up for their aggrieved constituents, many of whom may have been disenfranchised in this process. Treating today's electoral vote count in Congress as a meaningless ritual would be an insult to our democracy unless we registered our own protest against the obviously flawed voting process that took place in so many of our states. Voters who wish to cast a vote for president or vice president can't approach the polls with certainty that their vote will be counted. One of the most significant problems in Ohio and in many other states was the lack of measures to ensure the integrity of electronic voting machines. In 2004, they caused Democratic voters in Ohio to wait for eight hours before they could cast their ballot. They turned the Department of Civil Rights and the Justice Department into the Voter Suppression Division with voter ID laws, voter purging, voter caging, voter intimidation. There aren't going to be any more election stealings. And despite the final tally and the inauguration and the situation we find ourselves in, I do have one very affirmative statement to make. We won. Without voter suppression, Stacey Abrams would be the governor of Georgia. And 
Andrew Gillum is the governor of Florida. I acknowledge that former Secretary of State Brian Kemp will be certified as the victor in the 2018 gubernatorial election. This is not a speech of concession. If she'd had a fair election, she already would have won. You refuse to concede and say that you lost. Do you stand by that decision today? A absolutely. The election was not fair. The process was not fair. If Stacey Abrams doesn't win in Georgia, they stole it. It's clear. It's clear. I think that Stacey Abrams' election is being stolen from her. You uh, notably did not concede. I did not. Okay, you acknowledged that he won, but you did not concede. Correct. Five months later, do you still feel like your opponent won through voter suppression? Yes. Georgia okay. voters did not have their votes counted. They were not allowed to cast votes. They had their votes discarded. She would be the governor of Georgia today had the governor of Georgia not disenfranchised 1.4 million Georgia voters before the election. That's what happened to Stacey Abrams. They took the votes away. Was the election in Georgia statewide a free and fair election? It was not a free and fair election. Reminder, she wrote. Brian Kemp stole the gubernatorial election from Georgians and Stacey Abrams. And it was not fair to those who filled out absentee ballots. And depending on the county you sent it to, it either was counted or not counted, assuming you received it in time. Brian Kemp oversaw for eight years the systematic and systemic dismantling of our democracy. And that means there could not be free and fair elections in Georgia. It certainly gave the appearance of unfairness. And I think it was um, unfair. Stacey ran a great campaign. She probably won. But will I say that this election was not tainted, was not a disinvestment and a disenfranchisement of thousands of voters? I will not say that. Candidates, both black and white, lost their races because they have been deprived of the votes they otherwise would have gotten. And the clearest example is from next door in Georgia. Stacey Abrams should be governor leading that state right now. So you don't feel that you lost fair and square. No. I'm not saying it's going to be legit. It's the increase in the prospect of being illegitimate is a direct proportion to us not being able to get these, these reforms passed.